Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we are talking about energy of waves and we have already considered energy of, uh, let's say, spring or a rope when you are making waves with the rope. Well, right now we will talk about um, the energy of electric field. Well, we know about uh, the electric field being basically part of electromagnetic field and it has oscillations. Um, now, um, in, in, in theory, uh, we will actually consider right now a static electric field. Um, the most simple one uh, seems to be electric field between two plates of a capacitor because it's a uniform field within it and it, it has a um, finite volume. Uh, obviously we can consider some other fields, but this is the simplest one and that's why this is the subject of this particular lecture. Um, this lecture is part of the course, uh, it's called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com, um, together with a prerequisite course, which is Math for Teens. Math is very important for physics, nothing is basically done in physics without math, in particular calculus, vector algebra, and some other things. Um, now, the whole uh, website, all the courses on the website are completely free, and I do recommend you to watch this lecture from the menu which is presented on unizor.com because it's part of the course, so you know the logical sequence of lectures. So if you found this lecture, let's say on YouTube, by doing some search, I still recommend you to go back to unizor.com. Again, it's a free, there are no advertisements, so it's basically the same thing. Uh, but it will give you a global picture on the whole course and the place of a particular lecture in the course. All right, so back to our today's uh, theme. Now, as I said, the electric field between two plates of a capacitor, well, ideal plates, obviously, um, is the simplest because it's uniform. Now, another very important thing is that um, I'm not talking about energy of an entire field. We will be concentrating um, on energy of a local, uh, energy as a, as a local property of the field, which is energy density. Um, now, it's very important to concentrate on energy density because even if you consider a static field and you find the dependency between energy density of this field and intensity of the electric field in that particular point, in that particular local point of the field, then we can actually transfer, logically transfer the same result to any other electrical field, because it doesn't really matter how the field is created, even whether it's variable or static, dynamic or static field. If we are concentrating on a particular point in that field, and we're talking about energy density in this particular point, then even the results of this particular lecture, which was basically about a uniform field um, between the plates of a um, capacitor. These results and this formula can be actually applied to any other if at the end this formula will not depend on the general shape of the field, whether it's uniform or not, whether it's produced by capacitor or not. But with capacitors it's simpler and that's why I uh, present it in this particular way. Okay, so let's say you have a capacitor which we would like to charge. So this is my battery and uh, it has certain capacity obviously and uh, this is uh, a capacitor which I would like to charge from the battery which means um, let's say I have a switch here. 
So what happens if I close the switch? Well, since my battery is capable of chemical reaction of separating um, uh, electrons from uh, from from the uh, nucleus of the um, of the atoms, um, my electrons from one plate will start going, considering this battery has certain power. Now, the, it, they will go to another plate, and there will be a difference in potentials. So one plate will be plus, and another will be minus. Now, it's a process. So in the beginning, we have no difference in potentials, but with certain time, our um, charge on these plates uh, will grow, positive grow and negative grow. So it will be plus Q as some kind of a time-dependent variable and will be minus Q. Okay, so let's consider that during certain time um, my charge grows from zero to some kind of Q maximum. Whatever the maximum, it doesn't really matter what is this maximum. It's some some number, not necessarily the real maximum this particular uh, capacitor can be charged. It all depends on many different factors. So it grows, and Q max is something which where we would like to end. All right. Now, obviously, whenever we have plus and minus two charged, opposite charged plates, there will be a certain voltage between them. So the voltage also will, will grow from zero to some kind of Vmax. All right. <coughs> now, what is voltage? The definition of the voltage is its amount of work, voltage between two points in electric field, let's say or between two plates, or between two, between two any um, uh, points within the electric field. The, um, the voltage is amount of work which is needed to transfer unit of charge from one place to another. Now, if it goes against the field, let's say you have plus and minus, um, uh, and, and you would like actually to, to separate plus from plus to go to minus. I mean, that means that we have to do the job. Or for instance, if you would like a positive charge in the, at, at some point, a point charge, and we have another positive charge and we would like to, to move it closer. So it means we have to do the job. If it's a negative charge, then there is an attraction, so the field will go basically will make this particular work. But in any case, there is some work involved. Now, in this particular case, to separate these two charges, in the beginning it was zero, which means it was the same number of electrons and, and nuclei on the same plate. And now we are separating, we are ripping the electrons from the nuclei from this particular plate and move it to here. That's what battery does. So we have to do some work. Now, what actually this work depends on? Well, if there is already some kind of a voltage between these, some kind of a voltage V, then to bring a unit of charge from here to here, the battery should do some work, which is actually is amount quantitatively equal to V. So it's V times 1 Coulomb, if you wish. Coulomb is measure of the charge. Now, but V is changing. So what we were doing is we will have an infinitesimal amount of charge and transfer it to this. So what happens then? Well, this is amount of work. Now, V is actually function of Q. So it's probably better to write it this way. Obviously V is function of how much electricity we have already 
separated. And this is amount of work differential, differential amount of work, infinitesimal amount of work. We need to bring infinitesimal amount of charge when already there is a voltage between these two. Now, what I would like to do next is I would like to calculate the total amount of work I have to spend to charge it to Qmax or to reach the uh, voltage of Vmax. How can I do it? Well, if I have an infinitesimal amount of work as a function of charge, I just have to integrate it from 0 to Qmax this dW of Q which is equal to integral of 0 to Q max of V of Q times dQ. <coughs> okay, so Q is accumulated by a certain moment in time electricity, the charge between these two. V is voltage, but we know from the theory of capacitors how they are related. V is equal to Q over C. C is capacitance of the capacitor. So the voltage is proportional to the charge between the plates. Now, if you don't remember this, go to the corresponding lecture. Um, I didn't mention it, but every lecture on this website has a textual part where everything, whatever I'm doing right now, is written, basically. And there is a direct reference to capacitor um, uh, lecture in this course. Um, I don't remember exactly the names of the chapter and, and, uh, and part of the course, etc. It's part of the electromagnetism um, of, this, of this course. So, this is the theory of capacitors, and we know that there is something, if every capacitor has certain characteristic, physical characteristic, which is called capacitance, and this is basically a coefficient of proportionality between amount of charge accumulated on the plates and the voltage. All right, so I'll just use it over there. So it's equal to So I have uh, Q divided by C dQ. Okay, this is a simple integral. And um, it's equal to one half Q square over C. The formula Newton Leibniz. Again, if you forgot your calculus and you forgot that integral of q dq is actually q square in the, sim in, in the limits of uh, integration, you have to um, go back to mass, to calculus, and review that particular section. So I substitute the top, which is q max. So the result is one half q max square divided by C minus bottom, bottom is zero, this is zero, okay. So this is total amount of work, I'll put it Vmax, Wmax, which we have to spend to accumulate this particular amount of charge on uh, the plates of the capacitor. Okay, but I was talking about energy density. So this is an energy which is basically accumulated inside the whole um, electric field between the plates. And again, in ideal case, um, there is no electric field outside. It's also in between. And uh, there is also is, there is an assumption that this field is uniform between the plates. It's not exactly true. But whenever the distance between the plates is relatively small and the area is relatively large, it's basically approximately can be considered as a true statement. So how can I determine 
the density of the energy, which, which is actually uh, the characteristic of every point inside. Well, if everything is ideal, as I said, and the field is completely uniform and it doesn't really spread around, just only in between the plates, all I have to do is divide this by the volume between the plates. Okay, the volume between the plates is equal to area of the plates times distance between the plates, right? So area is area of the plates, D is distance between the plates. Okay, that's volume, fine. What is C? This is capacitance. Now, capacitance, and again it goes to um, the logic presented in that corresponding lecture about capacitors. Um, it can be measured and it's basically proportional to the area. So the greater the area of these plates, the more electricity it can store, basically. It's um, inversely proportional to the distance, which means the smaller the distance between the plates, the greater uh, electricity can be accumulated. Because plates are actually um, attract each other, so electrons are attracted, so the gr greater energy is concentrated in this particular case. What I didn't really uh, write yet is it also depends on what's in between the plates. Vacuum is one thing, uh, glass is another thing, paper is still another thing. And they actually um, uh, affect the, capacitor, the capacitance of the capacitor. Um, the more insulated, so to speak, this medium between the plates is, the greater amount of electricity you can accumulate without basically uh, having some kind of a sparkle between them which basically discharge all the electrons. So we need the greater um, uh, insulation uh, ability of the medium, the better. And what's the best is? Vacuum is the best. Okay. So in any case, there is something which is called epsilon here. Epsilon is called permittivity of the medium. <coughs> how, how permittive it is uh, for electrons to go through. And the, the best is the vacuum. Okay, now, um, well, let's just call, uh, uh, substitute these things to, to, to this. So, let me just um, skip the uh, suffix max because it doesn't really matter. It all depends on where exactly the stop when we charge, not necessarily to maximum, it can be charged to half of the maximum capacity, it doesn't really matter. So, W is one half Q squared divided by C equals to one half um, Q squared divided by C, which is epsilon A and D goes to the top. Okay, um, at the same time it's equal to, um, again, if V is equal to Q over C, Q equals V times C, right? So it would be V times C, V square, one half, V square, uh, C square D divided by epsilon A and C again can be substituted in this it would be one half D square uh, epsilon square A square divided by D square epsilon square and that's C square, okay. And then we do have epsilon A and D, right? I think that's it. I probably should have started in the beginning, substitute Q here. Let me start here. It would be V square um, uh, here. It would be this one. 
which would be one half v squared c squared divided by c, which is one half v squared times c. And now substitute c. It would be one half v squared and c, which is a. Uh, epsilon a divided by d. Right. Is it the same thing? Um, a square d square epsilon square. Yes, it's the same thing. So this is my formula. Okay, let's write it down somewhere here. And then we will talk about density. So this is the total amount of work. W equals one half v square epsilon a divided by d. So this is the total amount of work which we have spent separating the charges between the, these two plates. Well, that's basically the total amount of potential energy which is concentrated between these plates. I mean, where the energy actually did go. Well, we have to conserve the energy, right? So we have to spend this energy in the battery, which means right now it's supposed to be a potential energy between the plates. Okay. Now, again, the field within the plates, between the plates, is uniform. So if I will be able to divide this by volume, volume is equal to A times D, I will have the, the density. But the problem is that this density depends on the voltage between the two plates, which is not a local factor. What is the local uh, characteristic of the field? The local characteristic of any electric field is intensity of the field in this particular field, in this particular point, right? <coughs> okay, how related are intensity of the field and the voltage? Well, let's just think about what is intensity of the field. It's the force which is exhausted by the field uh, to a unit charge. Okay, so this is the force. Now, what is the voltage? Voltage is, between two different points, the voltage is amount of work which we have to perform moving a unit charge from one point to another. So, again, if you consider this capacitor the voltage is amount of work which is needed to bring a point, a unit charge from one plate to another. Amount of work. Now E is the force which is acting on that particular charge at that particular point, at any point inside. And again, I assume the field is uniform, so E is the same between the, pl between the plates everywhere. So obviously, if I will multiply the force by distance between the plates, that would be the work which is needed to move unit charge from a plate to a plate, which is actually the definition of the voltage. Right? So that's a very important part. This is amount of work, this is the force, and this is the distance. Force times distance equals work for a unit charge. Great. So I will do this and I will substitute instead of V, I will substitute E. What will I have then? I will have amount of work is equal one half v square, which is e square d square times epsilon times a divided by d it's equal to one half epsilon e square 
a times g. g square and d are canceling each other. And what is this? That's volume. So if I will divide w by volume, I will have 1 square, epsilon e square. So a local characteristic of the field, intensity of the field, which is the force acting in that particular point of the field onto a unit charge, is the only participating, epsilon is a constant, right? So it's the only participating variable which characterizes a local property of the electric field, because this is a function of every point, because it's a, it's a vector field. E is vector field. At any point, it's a vector, the force, acting on the unit charge. So that's how we have calculated the density of the energy between two plates and expressed it through a local characteristic of the electric field. Now, whether this particular field, in this case it's between the plates, is performed, is, is, is created by the capacitor, or maybe the electric field is created by some kind of a point charge and we are on some distance from it. There is an electric field, there is a Coulomb's law which basically guides how it's done. It's basically, again, since everything is <coughs> dependent, energy density is dependent only on the local characteristic, which is intensity of the field in that particular point, it doesn't matter how we created that field, with a capacitor or with a point charge or with something else. So this is a universal formula. Now, if it's a vacuum, then it's epsilon zero. If it's some kind of a medium, it's just epsilon, which is usually measured as epsilon relative to vacuum. So this is the vacuum, and this is a multiplier uh, by which we multiply the vacuum's uh, permittivity to get the f uh, particular medium permittivity. But in any case, that, that's what it is here. <coughs> and if the field is in the vacuum, electric field is in the vacuum, then this is just epsilon zero. For vacuum, epsilon r relative is equal to one of this. Okay, that's it. I uh, recommend you to read the notes for this lecture. They are basically the same thing which I did right now, but uh, once more, kind of a repetition is always helpful. Um, well, other than that, good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye.